Hey guys, if you're someone who has been looking for the marking scheme for the Cambridge O level Mathematics Syllabus D, paper code 4024, paper 1 2 for May June 2024, then in the right place. We're going to go through this exam paper in detail, discuss what was difficult, what was easy, and how we can improve on our mistakes and then make sure to use some tips and tricks to save time. So let's go. Question one says here are five temperatures in degree Celsius. Write these temperatures in order starting with the lowest. So the lowest will be always the negative number, but the bigger negative number. So negative six is the lowest. Then we have negative two. Then we have zero. Then we have one. And then we have four. So always remember the highest negative number is the lowest in value. And the smallest negative number will be greater than value compared to the other negative number. Then it says write these numbers in order of size starting with the smallest. So in such questions, you can convert all the numbers either in decimals, percentages, or fraction form. It depends on what the numbers are and how easy it is to convert them into which format. For this case, I'm going to convert this into percentages. 40% is already given. 0 0.45 is going to be 0 0.45 times 100, which is 45%. 3 over 8 in percentage is going to be 3 over 8 times 100, which is going to be 37.5%. So smallest, as you can see, is 3 over 8. Then we have 40%. And lastly, 0 0.45. So that's your answer. Next question says, shade one more small square so that the diagram has one line of symmetry. So that is going to be this one over here because the line of symmetry is this diagonal line. Then it says shade one more small square so the diagram has rotational symmetry of order two. So for that, we're going to shade this square because if we rotate this square, I'm going to make four diagrams to show you. So we start with this. So we have a 90 degree rotation. So in that rotation, what's going to happen is that So first, what will happen is that we'll have these ones over here, then another 90 degree rotation. That is another 90 degree rotation is going to give us these. Then the next 90 degree rotation is going to give us This one and the next 90 degree rotation is going to give us this one. So, as you can see, we're going back to the original shape once and twice. So, that's why this has an additional order symmetry of two. Question three says Olga writes a list of five numbers. The median of the numbers is 12, the mode of the numbers is 11, range of the numbers is 10, and the sum of the numbers is 75. Find the five numbers in Olga's list. So what we're going to do is, range of the numbers is 10. So let's say the numbers are x plus y plus c plus w plus v. So I'm going to say this is the smallest and this is the largest. So range is the difference between the smallest and the largest number. So that means range is going to be B minus X. So that's 10 equals to B minus X. Sum of the number is 75. So 75 is X plus Y plus Z, plus W, plus V. 
that is another equation that we have. Mode of the number is 11, which means 11 is occurring the most. So if we say 11 is occurring twice, so that means that 11 can be y and x. I assume x is 11 and y is 11. So if x and y are 11, 10 equals to v minus 11 and 10 plus 11 is v. So that's 21 is for v. So let's highlight that. Then, so we have x, y, and v done. So we're left with z and w. So median is 12, so that means z is going to be 12. And what's left? We're left with w. Well, then you find w from the sum 1. 75 equals to 11 plus 11 plus uh, 12 plus w plus 21. So now if we add these up, that's going to be 55. 75 minus 55 equals w and that is 20. So, what are the five numbers? The five numbers are 11, 11, 12, 20, and 21. These are the numbers in her list. Question 4 says convert 4 kilograms to grams. So, 1 kilogram is... 1000 grams. So 4 would be 4 times 1000, which is 4000 grams. Then convert 250 centimeter cubes to liters. 1 liter is 1000 centimeter cube. 1 over 1000 liters is 1 centimeter cube. So 250 centimeter cube is going to be 250 divided by 1000 which is 0 0.25 liters. That is your answer. Question five says in this question, all dimensions are given in centimeters. The diagram shows a parallelogram. Find the perimeter of the parallelogram. So the parallelogram opposite sides are equal. So this is 11, this is 11, this is six, this is six. So 11 plus 11 plus six plus six, and that equals to 34 centimeters. That's your answer. Part B says diagram shows a trapezium. The area of the trapezium is 36 centimeters squared. Find the value of y. So area of trapezium has the formula of 1 over 2 times height times sum of Parallel sides. So these are our parallel sides, y and 13, and 4 is the height. So 36 would equal to 1 over 2 times 4 times y plus 13. The so 1s are 2, 2, 2s are 4. 36 divided by 2 equals to y plus 13. That's 18 equals to y plus 13, and y is 5. That's your answer. Question 6 says, Jack uses number cards to make a two-digit number. Complete the missing card to give a two-digit number that is not a prime number. A two-digit number that is not a prime number is going to be 63. It's going to be 63. May says, when I add two multiples of 3, the answer is always a multiple of 6. Give an example to show that B is wrong. So when 
I add two multiples of three, the answer is always a multiple of six. Multiples of three can be 21 and six. So if I add 21 and six, that gives us 27. Now, as you can see, 27 is not a multiple of six, so May is wrong. Next question says, work out two or seven divided by one over three. So in a dividing fractions, what we do is we take the reciprocal of the second fraction and change the division to multiplication. So when I say the word reciprocal, I mean we're flipping the fraction. So one over three is three now. And two times three is six. So six over seven is your answer. Then work out five over six plus three over four. For this, when we're adding fractions with unlike denominators, what we do is we make the denominators equal first. And to make the denominators equal, we will multiply the first fraction by four and the second fraction by six. Remember, you multiply the numerator with the numbers as well, not just the denominator. So 4 times 5 is 20 over 24 plus 18 over 24, which is 38 over 24. Now, they want the answer in mixed numbers. So we divide 38 by 24. 24 ones are 24. That's going to be 4 and 1. So one whole number, 14 over 24, which can be simplified to one whole number, 7 over 12. That's the final answer. Question 8 says the train leaves station A at 7.43. The train arrives at station B at 10.27. Work out the time the train takes to travel from station A to station B. So it's leaving 7.43 and arriving at 10.27. What we do is, we start at 7.43, then we go to 8.43, so that's one hour. Then we go to 9.43, that's two hours now. Then from 9.43, we're going to 10. So that's 17 minutes. And then to 10.27, which is 27 minutes. So we add, let's make this one hour over here. So we add one hour to one hour to 17 is 27 minutes. So that's two hours and 44 minutes. You can also subtract the two times, but sometimes there's a chance of making an error and that's a fraction. So it's easy to start going from one hour to another hour and then when you're done with the hours, go to minutes, just add the time, and you'll have your answer. Part B says the bus leaves the bus station at 6.25. It arrives at the airport at 7.05. The distance from the bus station to the airport is 24 kilometers. Calculate the average speed of the bus for this journey, giving your answer in kilometers per hour. So for this, what we're going to do is first, we're going to find the time that it takes for the bus to arrive at the airport going from 625 to 705 so that's basically 25 from 625 to 705 is going to take us 40 minutes so for average speed we need to do distance over time Time in hours will be 40 divided by 60, which is 2 over 3. So 24 divided by 2 over 3 is going to be 24 times 3 over 2. And that gives us 36 kilometers per hour. That's your answer. Question 9 says there are red pens, blue pens, and black pens in a the box. There are X red pens. The number of blue pens is 5 more than the number of red pens. 
the number of black pens is two times the number of blue pens. Write an expression in terms of x for total number of pens in the box. Give your answer in the simplest form. So we have x red pens. The number of blue pens is 5 more than the number of red pens. So 5 plus x. And for black, it's 2 times the number of blue pens. So 2 times 5 plus x. So for the total, we'll just write x plus 5 plus x plus 2 times 5 plus x. That is 2x plus 5 plus 10 plus 2x, which is 4x plus 15. That is your expression for the total number of pens. Then says the total number of pens in the box is 27. Find the number of red pens, which means 4x plus 15 is equal to 27. So 4x equals to 27 minus 15, which is 12, and x is 3. So the number of red pens is 3. So for this question, it's very simple. What you can do is just translate your statements into an expression for each part, and then you can just add them up. Be sure to read the language very carefully. 2 times means you multiply, 5 more means you add. So these are your keywords that you need to really focus on. Next question says the scale drawing shows a part of the field A, B, C, D. The scale is 1 centimeter to 50 meters. Measure the bearing of C from B. So the bearing of C from B is going to be this angle. What you'll do is you'll use your protractor, you'll put it over here, center is going to be over here, and then you'll just measure the angle that this line is making with this line. Then says D is 250 meters from C and 300 meters from A. Use a ruler and compass only to complete the scale drawing of the field A, B, C, D. So D is 250 meters from C. and 300 from A. So what you'll do is firstly look at the scale. One centimeter is 50 meters. So which means we convert these lengths into centimeters first. So 250 divided by 50 is going to give us five centimeters from D to C. This is DC. And 300 divided by 50 is going to give us six centimeters, which is your AD. So using your compass, you'll open your compass to 5 centimeters and what you'll do is you'll draw a line. Using your compass, you'll open it to 5 centimeters and draw an arc from point C over here. And then putting your compass at point A, you'll open it to 6 centimeters and draw another arc from point A, which will be over here. So those two arcs will intersect somewhere over here. From there, it's going to be over here and here. So that intersection will show you point D. And then you can just connect the points A and C to D. And that will help in completing the shape. And also, then you can also check this distance would be 5 centimeters. And this would be 6 centimeters. So that's how you use your compass and like tractors for this question to construct the diagram that has been asked. Then it says there's a path across the field. The path is equidistant from A, B, and B, C. Use a straight edge and compass compasses only to construct the path. So the path is equidistant from A, B, and B, C. So if it's equidistant from A, B, and B, C, you're going to draw an angle bisector at B because B is the common point. So what you'll do is you'll measure this angle first to draw the angle bisector for this angle. So for the angle bisector, you'll open your compass to more than half of the length for AB. And then you'll draw an arc from point B over here. And at the same length, you'll draw an arc over here. Then using the same length that the compass has been opened to, you will put your compass over here and draw another arc over here. And then from this point, you'll draw another arc over here. 
So then you will connect the center of the angle to the intersection of this arc. And this will show you the locus of the points that are equidistant from A, B, and B, C. Question 11 says, by writing each number correct to one significant figure, estimate the value of this. So 5.32 is going to be 5. 3.97 is going to be 4. 878 is going to be 900. So 9 over square root of 900 is going to be 30. So that's going to be 3 over 10. Question 12 says A equals to 5B plus 7. Find the value of A when B is negative 2. So A is 5 times negative 2 plus 7, which is negative 10 plus 7, and that's negative 3. Then next part says C equals to 4D minus 9. Rearrange the formula to make D the subject. So C plus 9 equals to 4D. First, we'll move 9 to the other side, making it plus 9. Then we divide C plus 9 by 4. And now, as you can see, D is the subject. So you move each term one by one. Always move the additions and subtractions first. And then whatever is being multiplied and divide that first. And that after that. Question 13 says, Kamal records the number of phone calls he receives at work each day for 20 days. The results are shown in the table. Find the relative frequency of Kamal receiving 0 to 5 phone calls at work in one day. So that's going to be 9 over 20. Because he's working for 20 days and he's receiving 0 to 5 calls for 9 days. Then if he works for 160 days, find the number of these days Kamal would expect to receive 11 or more phone calls at work. So for 20 days, 11 or more is 4 and 2. So 4 plus 2 divided by the days, which is 20, times the number of days they're asking for, which is 160. So that's 6 over 20 times 160. Zeros get cancelled out. 2 ones are 2, it's 3. So 3 times 16 is 48. So 48 is the number of days Kamal would expect to receive 11 or more phone calls at work. The next question says, right, 42 million in standard form. So 42 million standard form is going to be 4.2 times 10 to the power of 7. Why 4.2 times 10 to the power of 7? Because you're moving the decimal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 places to the left. And remember, every whole number has a decimal at its end. And for standard form, you always write the decimal after the first non-zero digit number. Not the zero digit, non zero digit number. Then part B evaluate 1.3 times 10 to the power of negative 4 plus 7.4 7 plus 7 times 10 to the power of negative 3. So in this case, we'll take the highest common factor common, which is 10 to the power of negative 3. That will leave us with 1.3 times 10 to the power of negative 1 plus 7.4. So 10.3 times 0 0.13 plus 7.4, which is basically equal to 7.53. So now we have 7.53 times 10 to the power of negative 3, and that's your answer in standard form. As you can see, the first digit is a non-zero digit. That's where the decimal is after that. Question 15 says, triangle ABC is mathematically similar to triangle CBD. AB equals to 5, AC equals to 7, and BC is 8. Calculate BD. So to calculate BD, what we're going to do is, AB is similar to BC. 
and C A is similar to C D. D B is similar to C B. So what we will do is that A B over C B is the same as C B over B D. When we have similar shapes and we're trying to find the length, your shape is being enlarged or like reduced in size based on a scale factor. That's why there's similar shapes. So AB over CB is the same as CB over BD because the scale factor CB is increased by, because the scale factor by which AB is increased to CB is the same scale factor which increases CB to BD. So AB is five over eight equals to eight over BD. So BD is going to be eight times eight over five, which is going to be 64 divided by five centimeters. Question 16 says the region R is defined by these inequalities. So we have these inequalities. Find and label region R. So y greater than or equal to 2x is going to be. So this is your y greater than or equal to 2x. Since it's greater than, so we're going to shade the region above it then for the next one x plus y is less than equal to 4 that's going to be at so let's draw the line less than 4 is going to be over here and x is greater than or equal to zero that is your y-axis so greater than or equal to zero is going to come over here so label region r that's basically this one over here This is region R. Yep, that's your answer. Question 17 says A, B, C, and D are points in a circle with center O. Angle B, A, D is 120, and angle O, B, C is 20. Find the value of X. So for the value of X, what we can do is, is we can begin by finding this angle over here. Since A, B, C, D, if you notice, it's a cyclic quadrilateral. A, B, C, D is a cyclic quadrilateral because all the vertices of A, B, C, and D are touching the circumference of a circle. So we can find angle B, C, D by subtracting 120 from 180. Why? Because in a cyclic quadrilateral, opposite angles are supplementary. So that's 60 degrees over here. And since O, B is equal to O, C, because they're the radius, that means this will be 20 which means x is going to be 60 minus 20, and that's 40 degrees. Then, next question is to find the value of y. So for y, we know this is 40, this is 20, and uh, 
we can find this angle, which is the angle at this center. So we will do 180 minus 20 minus 20. That is your angle B O C. So that's going to be 140. If you remember one of the circle theorems, angle at the center is twice that of the angle at the circumference, which means y is going to be 140 divided by 2, and that's 70 degrees. That is your value of y. If you're still not sure about what I said, this and this. So center is this angle, which is 140. And this is at the circumference, that will be 70, half of it. Question 18 says, value 125 to the power of negative 1 over 3. 125 is 5 cubed. So 5 cubed, whole power negative 1 over 3. Whenever there's a power outside the bracket or inside the bracket, we can multiply them. So that's 5 to the power of 3 times negative 1 over 3. That's 5 to the power of negative 1. And then we can rewrite this as 1 over 5 to make the power positive. So that's your answer. Then simplify a cube over 4 a whole power 3 over 2. So once again, whenever there's a power outside the bracket and inside the bracket, you multiply those powers. So it's a to the power of 3 times 3 over 2 over 4a whole power 3 over 2. So that's a to the power of 9 over 2. And 4 is 2 square. So 2 square whole power 3 over 2. And a to the power of 3 over 2. So a power 9 over 2. 2 times 2 is 2 times 3 is 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So 2 cubed times a to the power of 3 over 2. Whenever we have similar bases being divided, we subtract the powers. So it's going to be a to the power of 9 minus 2 minus 3 over 2 over 2 cubed, which is 8. So a, 9 minus 3 is 6. So 6 over 2. And that's a cubed over 8. It's a very simple calculation, but I did it very step-by-step step so that anyone who still doesn't understand laws of indices, they can know what's happening in each step. Once again, if there's a power inside the bracket and outside the bracket, you always multiply the powers. And if there's a number attached to the variable, like you have a coefficient, the power will get distributed on the number as well, not just the variable. Question 19 says the mass of a bag of almonds is 125 grams, correct to the nearest gram. Right on the lower bound of the mass of the bag of almonds. So what we're going to do is, for the degree of accuracy, it's 1 divided by 2, which is 0.5. So lower bound is going to be 125 minus the degree of accuracy, 0 0.5, and that's 124.5 grams. Then it says the mass of a large box is 500 grams, correct to the nearest 10 grams. The mass of a small box is 250 grams, correct to the nearest 10 grams. Calculate the upper bound of the difference between the mass of a large box and the mass of a small box. So for this, what we're going to do is that to find the degree of accuracy for the small and large box. So for the large box, it's going to be 10 over 2, which is 5. And same for the small box, 10 over 2, which is 5. So you have to calculate the upper bound of the difference between the mass of the large box and the small box. So that means for the difference, large box will be upper bound and small box will be lower bound. Now, why is that? Because they're asking us for the upper bound of the difference. So that means for it to be a bigger value, we're supposed to subtract a small value from a big value. And to do that, the small value has to be the lower bound and the big value has to be the upper bound. So upper bound of large is going to be 500 plus 5, which is 505. And lower bound of small is going to be 250 minus 5, which is 245. 
So that's going to be 505 minus 245. And that's going to give us the answer of 260 grams. That is your upper bound of the difference between the mass of a large box and the mass of a small box. If you still find this to be confusing, I'm going to attach the link to a short about upper bounds and lower bounds that I've made. It gives a very detailed explanation about the example of how we're supposed to find the upper bound and lower bound when you're adding, subtracting, division, multiplication. So check out that short and it will help you more. And if you're still confused, you can just comment below and I'll explain it again. Question 20 says f of x equals to 2 minus 4x to 5. Find f inverse of x. So first, we replace f of x with y. And next, what we have to do is we have to make x the subject of the equation instead of y. So cross multiply to get rid of the fraction. Then you move 2 to the other side. Then what we do is I'm going to swap 4x with 5y. So it's going to be 4x and 2 minus 5y. The reason for that is since x has to be the subject, so I would prefer that x is positive since the beginning instead of being negative. So that makes the calculation much simpler. So now x equals to 2 minus 5y over 4. Last step, replace x with f inverse x and y with x. And that's your inverse. Then simplify f of x minus f of 2x. f of x is 2 minus 4x over 5 minus 2 minus replace x with 2x. 4 times 2x over 5. So that's 2 minus 4x minus 2 plus 8x over 5. I combined it as a single fraction. So that's 4x over 5. And that's your answer. So remember when it's like f of like from f of x to f of 2x or f of 3x, if there is a number being directly multiplied to the variable, then you will change the domain entirely. So instead of x, now it's going to be 3x or 2x depending on what they've given. Question 21 says the table shows the heights of 180 sunflowers we have to complete the histogram. So for that, we need to find the frequency density for each. Frequency density has the formula of frequency over class width. So they've already done the first one, so I'm gonna start with the second one. Class width is basically a difference of your range. So for 120 to 140, it's 20. This is 10, and this is 10, and this was 20. So for the next one, for 120 to 140, your frequency density is going to be 60 divided by 20, which is 3. Then we have 68 divided by 10, which is 6.8. Then 24 divided by 10, that's 2.4. These are your frequency densities. So using these frequency densities, let's draw this. So they have already drawn for the first one. 28 divided by 20. Which is 1.4. So for 3. This. Then for 6.8. It's this, and lastly for 2.4, it's this one. That's a frequency density. Then for question 22, the diagram shows the graph for y equals to 1 over x plus x over 2. By drawing a tangent, estimate the grid of the curve at x equals to 2. x equals to 2 is over here. So 
it's not just like two points on this line. This point and this point over here. So this has the coordinates of 1.1 and 1.2 and this has the coordinates of Three point three and one point eight. So the gradient is going to be one point eight minus one point two over three point three minus one point one, which is going to be zero point six divided by two point two. That's six over twenty two. That's three over eleven. So three over eleven is going to give us. 0.27. That's your estimate for the gradient at the point x equals to 2. By drawing the suitable line on the grid, find the solution for 1 over x minus 5x over 2 plus 1. Now, if we compare this equation to this equation, x over 2 is negative 5x over 2, and there's a plus 1 as well. So now, to figure out what the equation of the line is, I'm going to subtract the equation from the original one. So y would be 1 over x plus x over 2 minus 1 over x minus 5x over 2 plus 1, which is going to be 1 over x minus 1 over x plus x over 2 plus 5x over 2 minus 1. So that's 6x over 2, which is 3x minus 1. That is the equation of the line. So now we're going to draw the equation of this line on the graph. So to draw the equation of this line, we need the x-intercept and y-intercept. y equals to 3x minus 1. So when x is 0, y is going to be negative 1. And when y is 0, x is going to be 1 over 3. So, 0 0.3 is going to come over here, and negative 1 is going to come over here. So, if we draw the line, so your solution is going to be at this point and this point. So that is 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 0 0.45, and this one is 0 0.8. So these are the two solutions that I'm getting for x. Question 23 says, matrix A equals to 3, negative 1, 2, 0. Find the inverse of A. So first, you find the determinant of A. That's going to be 3 times 0 minus 2 times negative 1, which is 0 plus 2, and that is 2. Then what we do is we find the transpose. So transpose of A is going to be we swap the first and the last value and then change the sign of the second and third value. So it's going to be 0 and 3, positive 1 and negative 2 down. So A inverse is your over determinant times the transpose. So that's going to be 1 over 2 times 0, negative 2, 1, 3. Which can be rewritten as 0, negative 1, 1 over 2, 3 over 2. That is your inverse of A. Part B says A times X equals to 7, 4, find X. To get rid of the a, we multiply a inverse with a times x. Since a inverse is being multiplied first, so that happens over here as well. So that's going to be x equals to the inverse, which was 0, negative 1, 1 over 2, 2, 3 over 2, times 7 and 4. So now we multiply these. 
So that's going to be 0 times 7, which is 0. 1 over 2 times 4, which is 2. Negative 1 times 7, that's negative 7. 3 over 2 times 4, which is 6. So that gives us 2, negative 1. That is the value of x. When you're multiplying matrices, row times column, then row times column. Question 24 says solve x over x minus 1 minus 5 over x minus 3 equals to 1. Once again, we are subtracting fractions with unlike denominators. So we have to make the denominators equal first. x minus 1 gets multiplied by x minus 3, which means x gets multiplied by x minus 3. 5 gets multiplied by x minus 1 and x minus 3 times x minus 1, and this equals to 1. So that's x squared minus 3x minus 5x plus 5 over x minus 1 times x minus 3 equal to 1. Combine the like terms in the numerator, x squared minus 8x plus 5. Expand the bracket in the denominator, x squared minus 3x minus x plus 3 equal to 1. X gets, x gets multiplied with both the terms in the second bracket, and then negative 1 gets multiplied with both the terms in the second bracket. So that's going to give us x squared minus 8x plus 5 over x squared minus 4x plus 3 equals to 1. Now keep in mind, you cannot simplify over here. You cannot cancel out the x squareds. You cannot divide at 8x by 4x. That is completely wrong. If terms are being added or subtracted, you cannot simplify them by just canceling them out. You have to factorize the quadratic equations, bring them in the factor form when the brackets are being multiplied, and only then you can simplify it. Otherwise, you cannot. So it's going to be cross multiplied. x squared minus 8x plus 5 equals to x squared minus 4x plus 3. So now we bring everything on one side. x squared minus 8x plus 5 minus x squared plus 4x minus 3 equals to 0. So x squared minus x squared is 0. Negative 8x plus 4x is negative 4x. 5 minus 3 is 2. So now move the 2 to the other side. Cancel the negative signs. x equals to 2 over 4. And that is 1 over 2. And that's your answer. Question 25 says OCB is a triangle. A is a point on OC such that OA is to AC is 1 is to 3. X is the midpoint of BC. OA is A. OB is B. Find the position vector of X. Give your answer as simply as possible in terms of A and B. Position vector of X is this. This is what we have to find. So what we will do is that X is the midpoint of BC. And O is A, where O is to AC is 1 is to 3, which means this is 1 and this is 3, and the whole OC is 4. So if O A is A, AC is going to be 3A, and OC is going to be 4A. Okay. So we can find CB by doing CO plus OB, which is going to be negative 4A plus B. The reason why CO is negative 4A because OC was 4A. So if we change the direction, go from C to O, then the sign will change. It will become negative. So negative 4A plus B is your CB. Now, if we divide CB by 2, that's going to give us CX which is going to be negative 2a plus b over 2. So if this is negative 2a plus b over 2, this is also going to be negative 2a plus b over 2. 
So to find OX, I can easily do OX equals to OB plus BX. So that's going to be B plus positive 2A minus B over 2. Why? Because we're changing the direction. We're going from B to X now. C to X was negative 2A plus B over 2. So if you change the direction, once again, sign would change. So that's 2A plus B minus B over 2, which will give us 2A plus 2B minus B over 2. That's 2A plus B over 2. That is your value of the position vector of X in terms of A and B.